Welcome to the Assistive Technology for Preschool webinar. My name is Leanne Bramer. I'm a certified speech language pathologist, and I'm currently the coordinator at the West Virginia Department of Education for speech language impaired assistive technology and AIM. I wanted to tell you just a little bit about myself because through the years as I've listened to speakers, I've always wondered if they actually had school experience. I worked for 34 years in Kanawha County, working in preschools for 24 of those years. I collaborated with preschool teachers as a service provider and also as a consultant when I began doing their augmentative communication evaluations. I've also been a member of the assistive technology evaluation team at Camp Gizmo for the past 17 years. The learner outcomes for today include becoming aware of the laws and guidance regarding assistive technology, learning about assistive technology for all 12 targeted areas, uh, receiving resources for obtaining assistive technology, and finding out more about some low-tech assistive technology solutions. Now for a brief overview of assistive technology. There are three laws that school systems must comply with. The Individuals with Disabilities Act of 2004, which we know as IDEA, Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, and Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, which you probably know as Section 504. According to IDEA, each school district is required to ensure that assistive technology devices and services are provided if needed by the students to access their educational environment. You are receiving more and more students in your preschool classrooms who require the use of assistive technology to do the simplest things. Students are coming with more complex needs and multiple disabilities. The sooner these students receive access to their educational environment, the sooner they will build skills. Um, the IEP team determines whether or not assistive technology is provided for home use and it should be documented on the IEP. Assistive technology can fall under special education, related services or supplementary aids and services on the IEP depending on the needs of the student. It should be considered at each IEP meeting on the considerations page on the online IEP. An assistive technology device is any piece of equipment either acquired off the shelf or adapted for a student to improve their functional capabilities. It's important to remember there are also assistive technology services that help support the use of the device, like the evaluations, selecting the device, um, coordinating services, training staff, parents, students, and other service providers, customizing the equipment, all of those things are considered assistive technology services. With Title II of the ADA, primary consideration is given to the parents and students when selecting auxiliary aids and services for effective communication for students who have vision, hearing, or speech disorders. Schools need to provide what the parents request unless they can provide something comparable and they can prove that it's comparable. The important thing about this law is that the school should work with parents to address the effective communication needs of their students before it gets to the point that the parent demands devices. Working with the speech language pathologist, teacher of the deaf, hard of hearing, and teacher of the visually impaired, students' communication needs should be addressed as early as possible, especially if the student is nonverbal. Students may receive assistive technology through a 504 plan whether or not they're eligible for an IEP. In most cases, however, students who require assistive technology um, do have IEPs in preschool, which allows for federal funds to be used to purchase the devices. We do have an assistive technology guidance document, which includes information regarding district responsibilities, forms for the evaluation process, suggestions on how to incorporate AT into the IEP, and frequently asked questions. It's available online at the link on this page. We also have an assistive technology fact sheet available online to assist in explaining AT to parents and staff. 
In most cases, especially for communication, assistive technology should be recommended on the basis of an evaluation, not based on the student's disability. For instance, many times students who have a suspected autism diagnosis are given the Picture Exchange Communication System, or PECS, as their means for communication. PECS is a good augmentative communication system, but it may not meet the needs of all students with autism. Basing communication systems on the needs and skills of the individual student helps them to learn not only how to request or make choices, but grow language skills. I could definitely do a week-long training just on this piece. Just keep in mind that assistive technology like adapted seating, cups, adapted writing instruments, visual supports don't need to be have a complete um, AT evaluation prior to recommendation. I just like to caution against using AT that is in your closet or ready, readily available that may not meet the needs of the individual student. Always consult with your team of related service providers and make certain that you know how to use the assistive technology that they provide properly. There are actually 12 areas of assistive technology that should be considered at the IEP depending on the needs of the student. For complex students, there's a consideration form in the guidance document to help guide your discussions. The use of assistive technology should be a team process, and the selection um, should be a team process where all team members, including you and the parent, agree with the assistive technology that should be tried to address the barriers the students are facing in the preschool setting. If your county doesn't have an assistive technology evaluator or a team who can help recommend supports, there's a distance evaluation support that we provide through the Department of Education um, and through a project with WVU and Kanawha County Schools to provide distance observation in the classroom. It's absolutely vital to see what's going on in the classroom setting when you're trying to determine assistive technology. You can't get that information if you send a student to an outside evaluator. We use double robotics like the Shellbot on Big Bang Theory, if you're familiar with that. The distance evaluators can drive the robots from a re remote location to do the observations and then give input as far as what assistive technology should be attempted. And just a reminder that the update to Read IEP and Policy 2419 says that the teacher makes modifications for the student if needed to help the student succeed in class or program. There's a documentation sheet for these modifications um, in the um, resources on the online IEP. Now let's talk about the technology. This is the fun part. Assistive technology can range from no tech to low tech to high tech devices. It doesn't have to be mechanical to be assistive technology. I've been in preschool classrooms and I realize all the things you're responsible for doing with your students. As the case manager, please be sure to work with your team of service providers to get everyone on board for using the assistive technology. It will make your life easier and the student will reap the benefits. Planning ahead of time on how to incorporate assistive technology throughout the day will make it become a routine that everyone can assist in completing. These are some examples of assistive technology available for communication that your speech language pathologist might recommend for your students. There are some no tech solutions like PEX notebooks and choice boards, and then mid tech solutions like GoTalks and seven level communication builders all the way to high-tech devices like iPads with ProLoquo to go and Accent communication devices. All of these should be recommended based on the needs of the student. In preschool, students with complex needs are often working on cause and effect. They can learn that by using switch activation if they have exit issues, which don't allow them to directly activate a toy or device. There are also simple switches like the Big Mac, which can record a single message or, or activate a toy, and the Big Red and Jelly Bean switches that can activate toys for cause and effect. You've probably seen some of these switches in your classrooms.
These are some more specialized switches that you may not have seen, like the candy corn switch, the joystick with the push button, and the wobble switch, which can be used for students who have less intentional fine motor control. I love these new switches, which address the needs of students who have very limited um, intentional movement. The PAL pad doesn't require that the student lift their hand to activate it, but allows them to crawl their fingers to the middle of the switch to cause the activation. The movement sensor switch allows you to use the flexible sensors to um, adjust to the range where the student can produce movement and it senses when the movement has taken place. The child doesn't have to touch the switch at all. Um, it can also be adjusted to accept different um, movement times. It's very powerful for students who have limited movement. We all know that students come to preschool loving the iPad, whether they've had the ability to directly activate it or only the ability to uh, watch and listen to it passively. There are switches available now to give the students access. The one I've found to be most effective is the Blue 2 switch by AbleNet. It costs about $189, but it's very powerful. It's easy to pair. It doesn't usually conflict with other Bluetooth devices in the room like cell phones. It also provides two switch access, which is vital for all switch users to switch to as soon as they understand the concept of using one switch. This switch can also move forward with the student if they learn how to do scanning on an iPad using communication apps like the Proloquo to Go, Lamp Words for Life, and Touch Chat. So it's not just for doing cause and effect. In order to use the Bluetooth switches on the iPad, the apps must be designed for switch use. Inclusive Technologies has many free apps, and none of their apps usually cost more than $2.99. They're wonderful for teaching cause and effect, and um, there are more expensive switch apps um, available that are being developed all the time, but these are perfect for preschool. I just wanted to mention a couple of apps that you can use with your iPad in preschool. This app can be used for all of your students. Um, it would be great to use it at a library center or a science center where students could record themselves reading a story, talking about a science activity, and then listen to it be replayed. It would be great for language development and auditory feedback for those students. Um, for those students who have, are verbal but have access issues, it would be a great way to allow them to participate in those centers. Sounding Board is a free app for communication that is powerful. You can create your own choice boards. You can incorporate your own photos. It also has symbols available. You could create choice boards for snacks, art activities, that kind of thing. And then they could also access it using the Bluetooth switch if you had it. Um, it offers in-app purchases for additional voices and vocabulary, but you can record your own voices on it. Um, it's great for choice making as well as my choice board creator. It has large buttons, black and white contrast for visual attention, and it has um, up to six choices, and you can download your own photos for this one as well. Downloading images from Google is very easy to incorporate them into your um, camera roll, and then you can just um, use those to put them into those two um, apps that I just discussed, sounding board and choice board creator. There are all kinds of accessibility settings on the iPad that allow access for students with disabilities. Be sure to collaborate with your uh, related service providers on what the student requires and enlist their help in setting it up for you too. Guided access is a powerful tool for preschool teachers. It allows you to lock the iPad onto an app so the students have to use the app you select for a certain activity. Um, we all know that they know how to find their way in and out of apps independently and um, for activities where you might be using, for instance, the sounding board or choice board creator, this is a great way to keep them just on that app page and not allow them to go um, anywhere else. There are all kinds of resources available for adapting the iPad for physical and visual difficulties and I will be happy to make those resources available to you. 
for computer access, you've probably seen some of the technology in your classroom. Sometimes it's something as simple as an adapted mouse or a touch screen. There are all kinds of seating, mobility, and positioning assistive technology available. Your PT will be the member of your team who should assist with it and train you on its proper use. And I'm sure some of you have seen these things in your classroom already. General and daily living skills would address additional factors which may impact the student's participation in the classroom. Behaviors, both positive and negative, um, student strengths, learning styles, um, coping strategies, and fatigue can all be addressed with this type of assistive technology. Consideration of math could include math manipulatives, abacus, math line, uh, math smart charts, all these different types of things, calculators, of course, talking calculators, and you have these pieces of assistive technology in your classroom, and they're available for all students to use if needed. Assistive technology for organization could include sensory self-regulation tools, deep pressure tools, fidgets, um, information systems, um, all the way to things like um, first then cards and daily schedule cards, which you would probably be more likely to use in preschool. Um, the power of these organization tools shouldn't be underestimated. They'll lead the student to become calmer, more independent, and make your life so much easier because everyone knows what they need to do and what's coming next. Assistive technology for recreation and leisure could include adapted toys, physical education equipment, uh, remote controls for movies and music, um, all the way to computer-based activities, online and virtual uh, recreational activities. Assistive technology for vision can include large print, magnifiers, audio text, high contrast pictures, um, large cal key calculators. In your preschool classroom, you might see um, black backgrounds, um, high contrast materials or simple enlarged photos uh, for students who have CVI. Working with your teacher, the visually impaired, um, will assist you in providing what the child needs. Remember, it's not one size fits all. Each student will be different. Assistive technology for hearing might include FM systems, Roger pins, induction loops, closed captioning, voice to text, um, real-time captioning. Uh, you might have students in your classroom who have um, cochlear implants or who have hearing aids, and those are all forms of assistive technology. Now, anything that's implanted into the student um, is not a responsibility of the school system to provide, but we do need to access that, that technology to provide their education. Assistive technology for reading can include adapted books, low-tech modifications um, like handheld magnifiers for text um, to read aloud to individual groups, text readers, electronic text, all different kinds of things for reading. There are some low-tech solutions that can be used in classrooms for participation with um, students with complex needs. And some of those include the alternate spinner, um, object uh, communication boards, the Big Mac, um, E-Tran boards or eye gaze boards, low-tech eye gaze boards, um, the step-by-step -step communicator, just simple communi paper communication boards, as well as just symbols on a communication trifold. All of these forms of assistive technology are important but do provide participation access for students, and you might have seen um, several of these in your classroom. I'll be doing a session at Celebrating Connections on how to use low-tech solutions in your classroom. Um, we'll also have available all of the switches that I've told you about, as well as iPads and the Bluetooth switches for some hands-on sessions. Um, we'll be talking about how to incorporate technology into your day as a routine in each area of your classroom. It should be a fun day, so I hope you'll be able to join us. It is limited to 65 participants, um, but um, hopefully you can um, maybe even come with your speech language pathologist and come as a team. Um, here are some resources for obtaining equipment. WebEtz has a wealth of technology that you can try before you buy. So you can get equipment from them. They have a free resource library, 
and um, they'll send it to you for um, a limited amount of time, usually two weeks, two to four weeks. Sometimes you can keep it longer. Um, the IRC, the Instructional Resources Center, um, is based in Romney, and they have tons of resources for students who have vision and hearing impairments. So be sure and consult with your DHH or TBI teachers um, about the IRC and the equipment they, you can get there. We do have a supplemental funding grant through the department that provides reimbursement for unanticipated assistive technology expenses. These expenses can include things like new preschoolers um, that you get, for instance, from birth to three, um, transfers from other counties or states, um, students who require eye-gaze systems because they have absolutely no other means of accessing their educational environment, and students who have expensive assistive technology needs. The special education director is the one who applies for the grant. The county purchases the equipment. The AT is incorporated into the IEP, and then the application is turned in by the director. Here are just some frequently asked questions about assistive technology, and these are also found in the guidance document. Are school systems required um, to pay for assistive technology devices? Yes, they are if they're part of a child's IEP. Can school districts require parents to use their private insurance to pay for the necessary assistive technology? No, they can ask if they're willing to do it, but they can't require it. It's always their right to say no. Do school districts have the responsibility to pay for an independent educational evaluation regarding assistive technology? Yes, it's a requirement in policy 2419, just like any other independent educational evaluation. Are school districts responsible for customization, maintenance, repair, and replacement of assistive technology devices? Yes. Can families be asked to purchase the device or augment the identified assistive technology needs of the student? Families can choose to participate because education is a shared responsibility, but it is, it is recognized that assistive technology services can cross a broad spectrum and they're functional for educational needs, but also a lot of times at home. So when viewed in this manner, the possibility of joint funding is entirely appropriate as long as the parents are willing to share the financial responsibility voluntarily. If the family does purchase the assistive technology device, the school cannot mandate that the device be brought to school. Families can assist, insist that another device be provided for school use. Here are some resources, some contact phone numbers for um, different aspects of assistive technology through either Department of Education, WebAts, the Early Childhood Lending Library, um, and the IRC, for instance. I just wanted to um, give you a reminder about Camp Gizmo. Um, they're now accepting applications. The deadline for the application is April 15th. Um, it will be um, July 13th through the 17th and it's for children birth to eight, and especially students who have significant and de uh, multiple developmental needs. It's an extremely valuable resource for not only the students in the school system because you get the reports back from, from the um, camp, but also for the parents. Um, so if you have any students who have uh, multiple complex needs, please consider um, giving that parent um, information about Camp Gizmo. I'd like to thank you for your dedication to students and for your heart for working with students with special needs. We all know that it's not easy sometimes. Um, and I know that by hearing about assistive technology today, um, we're talking about extra things that you might have to do for some of these students to make them successful in your classroom. But I know that because you chose to be a teacher, you choose to help your students in any way possible. And if there's anything I can do to help your, make your job easier, please feel free to contact me at any time. Thank you so much. We're going to take some live questions now. Um, so if you have any questions, you can just um, type them in and let us know what you'd like to have answered. 